Well, we're back with the conversation. As far as business money is concerned, you know where to find us on social media. Uh, okay, put in your com comments, questions, and observations, and join the conversation. We appreciate reading from you what your thoughts are about whatever you see, you know, here on the program, and any other thoughts of your own that can just get things better. So be part of the conversation. Visit us at Channels Television. That's the big uh, platform for the channel. Then you can put it at this morning. Um, Harriet will be glad to mind your business the way I always do here. So you can always uh, put it at CTV Harriet and of course you know where to find me. Um, if you don't find me, I always find a way to find you at B Bozin. And B is always main business. So let's talk about the business of wheat and that is a major component into, com uh, uh, into pastries. So uh, what is whatever you can call it, meat pies and what have you. But what's going on in that sector? We're going to put a bit of this out there for you as part of our conversation on commodities. Um, Adar Konobi is joining us from um, Financial Derivatives Company. Good morning. Good Thanks morning, for coming. We, we appreciate that. Uh, where are we at the moment? Uh, take us through where are we as far as um, which is concerned. Well, um, if you compare with prices now uh, in the global mm. market, mm. prices now are about 20% lower as to what it was last year, which is good. I mean, seeing that we import, um, well, in the global front, though, seeing that we import quite, seeing that, we've seen that we put a lot of wheat into the country for, you know, um, turning them into um, finished goods. Mm. But uh, at the same time, uh, in the U.S., wheat, uh, wheat prices are down because of competition from the Black Sea region and from Europe, as well as as well as um, the U.S. to be forecasting large inventories there. So, you know, as, as a, uh, relating to global wheat prices, prices are quite uh, soft as, as, as it was last you know, year. If, you, if you're looking at Nigeria about uh, what we do regarding uh, the price stability in the wheat market, and this is a conversation we have almost all the time, does that translate into what happens back here at home? Even prices are lower, 20% over a year period, mm. Are the global marketplace, if you look at the local marketplace, do we see any change at all? Well, it's uh, the reverse is the case for us. Um, wheat prices are actually higher. I mean, we have to import this wheat. Um, we have to import raw wheat, uh, Durham wheat, to um, turn into confectionaries and uh, 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 bread and pastries, and pastries and, and, pastries and all of that. So. Um, wheat prices in Nigeria are high, which is already translating into the cost of finished products. Um, compared to last year, prices are about 30% higher, 25% higher, and typically because of the exchange rate pass through. That is what is affecting a, a wheat flour at the moment. And if we look at the, uh, our imports for the first quarter as well, Durham wheat was the second largest import, and we have major importers, and it cost us about 42 billion naira, approximately $4 billion. Uh, $4 billion. So, there's, we, we, we put a lot of pressure on our um, reserves for importation of wheat. That's why we try, we need to, I know there are a lot of uh, programs coming on to try and encourage wheat production in locally, because locally, we have what it takes to be fair to produce wheat locally and be competitive in the international market. What does it take market? to produce wheat locally? Is it the, the weather? Is it the soil? What? Well, for the weather, we have uh, we have good weather, especially in the north, where temperatures fall below 15 to 20 percent in, in the night time, and we have the highland as well, such as Taraba, uh, a Cross River. So, um, so there's the irrigated, there's the uh, there's the irrigated, there's irrigation planting, and there's the high highland planting. So, in, in terms of weather, we have good we have good weather to um, plant wheat. But the problem has always been uh, consistent government policies. I was going to ask the question: What is the what do you think is the key challenges faced by local wheat growers? Um, well, you know, like I said earlier, the problem remains. Uh, government policies and following up. So there's been uh, the implement policies, they don't, they don't really follow up or there might be delay in funding. Or then um, if farmers are registered into a scheme, 60, 70 percent of those are not farmers. They are actually, you know, they're just taking advantage of the, uh, of the program. Portfolio. <laughs> exactly. Portfolio farmers. Yes. Yeah, so those who do farming use it portfolio. Yes. Yeah, so not those who get on the ground. Yeah, exactly. So that has been the problem. And uh, it's, it's sad to know that our local production is just 60,000 tons. And we consume 60, about... 60,000 tons a year? 60,000 tons, yes. And uh, we, pro we import about 3.5 million uh, metric, metric tons. tons. So that's a huge, 
yeah. huge gap that can be filled. Uh, I know in the 80s, we produced about 250,000 tons, which was good. But you see more farmers are switched, you know, switched away from wheat farming because they didn't have any uh, government support. Even if they produced, there was no market to help uh, take those uh, products to um, to the shelves. It has, been, so, it has been a constant battle between those who are importing wheat and those who are producing them locally. Well, there, there has been a constant battle between those importing wheat because then if you get to import, you do not patronize wheat that is produced locally. We, so we, then, we, the bakers, the, the, the confectioners, the pastry guys, don't buy the local brand when they get to the market and say, hey, look, I'm going to buy that imported wheat because perhaps I'm sure it's better than the one produced from Taraba State. Yes, that, that is the case as well. There's, a, there's not a very strong value chain. So these guys don't know how to you know, push out their products. So there has to be some sort of a very good marketing strategy and the government coming in to, you know, encourage these guys to lift the products from the farmlands to be competitive. So at the end of the day, they get to sell at losses because they don't have anyone to buy their products and people are patronizing more of the local, uh, more of the foreign a foreign wheat flour. So that has been the In terms of incentives, what are you thinking of? What do you think should be done? Do they need just money? Uh, uh, what? Because if you look at Dangote, for example, as a group, it's gone into tomato now, it's gone into whatever, and say, look, I'm just going to do it. We're going into rice. I'm just going to do it because we just have to do it. Yeah. Well, funding is an issue. Should is it's is a critical issue. Like, if you look at the budget for 2016. Just below 2% was allocated to the agricultural sector, which is below the 10% required as set by the African Union for member states. So we are not even meeting our uh, target for you know, funding, annual, annual, funding. Uh, annual funding. So that's a challenge. So the, but then if you want to attract private sector investment, we need to have a very conducive business climate to attract. And as well, um, very strong government backing. So see, there seems to be um, some sort of disconnect between um, the policies and implementation. So funding is an issue. Um, in uh, Educating the farmers as well is one. About majority of farmers in Nigeria still practice subsistence farming. So it's surprising that we still use very poor um, um, machineries, very... Um, Do a lot of manual farming. Manual farming. Mm. Uh, outdated outdated equipment, poor seedlings mm. that are, that is not able to withstand the, um, the temperature as it is. So um, the CBN has actually introduced a um, borrower anchor program, which they've set aside 40 billion a naira to help small scale farmers, giving them access to improved seedlings, fertilizers, and insecticides. So that is you know that is that is positive. As well as we have the Lake Chad uh, Research Institute as well, is trying to you know help. And, and a lot of uh, foreign, I, I, foreign I, I, organizations. I, 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 agree with, I agree with you totally. Uh, uh, and I think the wheat conversation brought something to the fore. I uh, spent a few days in, in Meduguri in Banu State yeah. recently, and, 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 and the governor of the state, Shachima, did say that the actual lake charge mm -hmm. could produce the, the wheat that you need yes. for Nigeria because the climate there is just a rise. It's just the right one for wheat. But look at the insurgency, look at the insecurity. You just can't do farming yes. there. So if that plays it, because you have a, a wheat mill in Medigree, which is quite massive, mm -hmm. but operating 50% capacity and now doing maize instead of wheat. Yes. Well, like you rightfully said, insurgent activities on the Fulani headman attack is affecting um, planting and in Brno and some parts of the world. So, so you have um, not a lot of farmers turning up or uh, turning out to, you know, mm, take to, to cultivate the land. Yes. And I think we need to fix the security aspects of these incentives for the for the local uh, wheat market. Thank you very much, Ada. We appreciate your coming in today. Thanks for uh, having me. I think me. we'll continue to have the wheat conversation moving forward. <laughs>